Hello everyone, thanks for joining me again today. On my bench here I have my my next project. And this, let me get this off of this tripod so we can get you a better look. Sorry about the shaking. It is a 1972 Coleman 220F. Let me see if I can get a good shot here of the collar. 220F right there. It's in really good shape for the age that it's in. And on the bottom of the lantern here, there is some markings that are nice to know. There's a four right there. That's April 72. You can see it right there. 1972. And it says a Coleman Company, Wichita, Kansas. This particular lantern belongs to my friend Jimmy. He said that he grew up with this lantern. His daddy, he remembers him himself and his daddy lighting it and using it on many camp outs as they, when they went out as a family. And he said that uh, now there's, he's not gonna use it at all. It's been sitting in a box inside of his house for many, many years. So he saw one of my videos. Jimmy's one of my ham radio friends. And he saw that I could rebuild it and probably use it, so he he gave it to me. So thank you very much, Jimmy. I really, really appreciate it. So when it came to me, the glass, the globe was already broken. Okay, and uh, so we ordered another one of those. I got it here with my Bass Pro Shop card. Uh, I had some gift cards that were given to me. I've been holding on to so. I bought a new globe and also the you'll notice and you guys already know some of you guys that the that the generator's missing out of here well I took it out and started looking at it already and it needs to be replaced it kind of got bent in here I don't know how but you try to move the cleaning tip in and out and it kind of binds and it's not working good so I went ahead and got me another generator just to make sure everything was going to work out good. This one was pretty dirty inside. Uh, been there for a long time. So we're going to install a new generator in this one. This I got also with my Bass Pro Shop card. And then lastly, when I was doing my initial checks, the pump here will not pump up. So I tried soaking this in oil and uh, all that. Let me see if I can get this off. Let me put you back on the tripod. Okay, we'll zoom in here. There's a little, many of you guys already know, there's a little lock type handle or ring here. It's not really a handle, but you pull out like this. Actually, it's better to get a screwdriver in there. There we go. Take out this piece. Pull out the pump and the pump here is very, very old. I tried to re-oil it and get it to come back to life, but it was no good. So with some more of my Bass Pro money, I ordered a pump kit. It's got the leather the leather pump cup in there. It's all in this kit right here. So I don't know if we can slide this down where it's clear up, but you can see it's a it's the real leather pump cup from uh from Coleman. So <clears throat> we're going to install all these things and take it apart, kind of clean it. The the cap here. is the new style you can tell that because it's got the slots here Let's see if I can get this to focus it's got the slots there in the threads see them there as I rotate it around get the light in it so that whenever you release the pressure on the tank the air that is released is blown back down towards the tank the old style caps like what's on my 200 series and some old stoves we got it has a hole here instead 
So this is kind of an updated version. And the seal looks pretty good inside there for the for the cap seal. So I'm not, the light is kind of weird in here. So it just needs to be cleaned up a little bit probably. So anyways, everything turns here. So let me see if I can focus back here. This turned obviously because I got it out. The valve turns good. So we're going to take it all apart and give it a good cleaning and then uh, put it back together and uh, see if it will run. I'm not going to show you the whole rebuilding of this thing. There are plenty of videos out there already on how to rebuild these, these things. Lots of good videos and I don't believe I could do any better. So when I come back, we're going to light this thing for the first time. All right, we got it cleaned up as uh, good as I could. Uh, we got the new generator installed right there. And uh, cleaned all this up best we could. We could not get the, the top off. Uh, I'm going to need something to break this loose. I, I broke this, this um, retaining nut loose right there. That one right there. And I couldn't get it to break loose from the fount. So, judging by the way the thing was stored, I didn't see any spider webs or nothing in there. I blew through all these tubes to make sure that it was all clear. Uh, that's the biggest problem with these is spiders get inside here and they like to build nests up inside this air tube. This is where your air comes from up here to the top. And then your fuel comes in through the generator right here. So if I can get over here where there's more light. And mixes in here. And then it comes down to where your mantles go. So that's one of the biggest problems with these in storage is cobwebs. Getting in there and plugging up this tube. Or spiders, dead spiders and stuff. So I got that all cleared out best I could. Pressure test it. The cap is holding. We've got our new pump installed. So it's doing really good so it's hard to do this one-handed but now it's pumping up and now we're going to install these mantles these are mantles from peerless and the back's kind of wrinkled the lights kind of hit the wrong model 2CHG these are uh, what I'm told more durable mantles and I've got them also my other lanterns but they're they're supposed to be better mantles they're supposed to be made with the material thoron i think it's thorian something like that that's supposed to help it glow brighter it says 250 candle pyre so um, so far they've been good in all my other lanterns i put them in i've had bad luck with the coleman ones that, like you buy at walmart they uh, tend to fall apart like on the after the first or second use, they start getting holes in them. These have been good. So let me install these and then we're going to do a test fire on this baby. All right, here we go. Going to pump it up about 10 more times, I guess. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times, just for good measure. Now, um, this lever, you turn it two or three times, probably not a big deal with this new generator, but what it does is it, when you go up, it runs this little pin up through there and it cleans the tip, kind of like the injectors in your car. And we want that to be down. It says here on the knob to rotate it one quarter turn and light it. And I've got the globe off right this second. So let's like this and whenever you turn the valve you will hear if you hear just air then that's all you're getting but it should sound like it's kind of like instead of just a steady hiss it'll kind of have a spit to it so i don't know if you can hear it with all these vehicles going down my road out here but here it goes there it goes All right, 
we've got a successful light and now the generator inside here needs to warm up because that's where it uh, the fuel is turned into a into a mist uh, itemized I guess is the right word so let's give it uh, maybe a couple more pumps maybe that will help There's 20 more pumps. Uh-oh. Something's wrong. I don't think it's getting any fuel. Try heating that generator up some. Well, we're going to figure out what's going on with this. So let me see what's happening. Alrighty, we're back. So it's it's working good now. Uh, I don't know what was happening to it. Uh, could have been that the there was a piece of trash that had broke loose and gotten there into the um, plugged the hole temporarily with the generator but all of a sudden I I just kind of released the pressure on the tank after you know it was shut off pumped it back up and relit it and turned the, the lever two or three times and it came back to life so I've got the valve almost all the way open turn it back just a little bit and it seems to be working great so I don't know if that's because I put a new generator in there maybe it needed to saturate that white piece that's inside there or uh, what was going on but now it's burning super bright all right so there it is set it outside here to be kind of burning a little a little bit model 220 F been in storage for years and years and just a little bit of minor cleaning and it's ready to go look here I can even lit my my model 200 I did in my other video beautiful if you have these types of lanterns in your uh, in your possession and you haven't used them in a while take them out and clean them up uh, they are like almost bulletproof if you a little bit of maintenance on these babies and they will last you forever I mean this is a 1968 right here I just redid this is a 72 running great I took this one camping uh, that video I did where my uh, amateur radio set up at camp that lantern was burning there that that whole three-day weekend so anyways thanks for watching today and thanks again to Jimmy for uh, giving me this lantern and allowing me to clean it up and uh, brother if uh, if you want it back you let me know because it's it was your daddy's lantern it's running perfect now and I don't mind giving it back if you want it back um, you know, there's something about heirlooms, something about that blown, something that belonged to your your daddy that is very special. So, anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, if you have any questions, put it down in the comments. See you later.